are you experiencing large eye floaters and when you move your head from side to side it may be really annoying and you may really get scared but this today's topic is all to do with large eye floaters also called posterior vitreous detachment or a PVD so friends PVD or posterior vitreous detachment is a common aging problem so in today's video let's break down this topic into what it is what are the symptoms and what are the treatment options so let's just dive into it I'm Dr. Kumar, doctor from Dr. Eye Institute and this channel of eye logs is everything to do with vision and eye care. If you haven't already subscribed to it, please do so and do not forget to click on the bell icon so that you get notified every time I release a new video. So in my last episode, kindly uh, click the link above, I covered the topic of floaters. But PVD is actually a very large floater which can be really disturbing if it comes in the way of your vision. So let's go back to the anatomy of the eye, which of course I did discuss in my last video. Revisiting this concept of the anatomy will help you understand what exactly is a PVD. So let's understand the anatomy of the eye and one part of it called the vitreous humor. It is a clear, colorless, so it's a transparent substance like a jelly between our natural lens and the retina. This is called the vitreous humor. Vitreous takes about 90% of the eye volume, but you'll be surprised that 99% of the vitreous is actually water. The rest of it is collagen, protein, sugar, etc. Now, despite this water to collagen ratio, it is actually a firm jelly. So vitreous is responsible to maintain the spherical shape of the eye. So let's presume that we remove the vitreous from the eye. What will really happen is the eye actually collapses. In our language, it is called a thysical eye. So don't forget friends, vitreous humor, although 99% water, is responsible to give the round shape of the eye that we really see. So what is a posterior vitreous detachment? Let's get into a deeper understanding of this. As we age, there is a wear and tear of this vitreous gel and so it shrinks. As it shrinks, it detaches from our retina. So as this gel separates from our normal retina, which is of course in the back part or the back part of the cavity of the eye, eventually the gel structure collapses completely and separates from the retina, located at the very back of the eye cavity. And this condition is called the posterior vitreous detachment. Now as this vitreous gel separates from the retina, sometimes this traction or the pull can be so severe that it can cause a retinal hole in the place where this adhesion was quite strong. So let us understand what are the symptoms, means what do patients really complain of when they see a posterior or when they experience a posterior vitreous detachment. The most common symptom is that yes doctor, I had some floaters, suddenly they have increased in number, one possibility. Second possibility is that they see like a cobweb of a structure in front of their eye because that's the shadow that they are seeing and that's another complaint that I get very commonly from my patient. Sometimes these patients have different symptoms and the other symptom can be like a flash of light. It means like they see lightning in their eye specifically when they move the eye in a particular direction. If patients complain as I said increase in floaters, cobwebs or a flash of light, it may indicate the presence of a posterior vitreous detachment. Another symptom sometimes is a blurred vision. This happens when this cobweb suddenly appears in the center of your vision or in your line of vision and that's the reason why these patients experience blurred vision. So now friends we know what are the symptoms, it means what you as patients would experience let us understand how do we diagnose this as doctors. Important is go to eye specialist specifically who is a vitro retinal surgeon. What they will do is they'll put drops in your eye. You all know that. You have to sit for an hour. They dilate your pupil and then a detailed retinal checkup is done. What these retinal doctors really see is called the Vessis ring. It's like a ring like structure that is seen in front of the retina, the back part of your vitreous and this confirms the diagnosis 
of a posterior vitreous detachment also called as a PVD. Since now we have understood what is a PVD, why is it important to diagnose it? And once we diagnose it, what can we really do about it? So there are two main reasons as to why it is important to diagnose a PVD. As I mentioned, you'll be dilated and a retinal doctor will check your retina. It's important because this can be associated with a retinal hole. And this, if found, friends, you have to get the laser done immediately. Why? Because if you sit on this, think over it, ponder and come back after a while, this may go into a retinal detachment, which will then turn into a simple laser treatment into a large major surgery. There is often a misunderstanding that once a patient undergoes a cataract surgery, these floaters or PVD will disappear. Friends, this really doesn't happen. Cataract surgery has nothing to do with this large floater that you may be experiencing in your vision. So as I mentioned, that cataract surgery does not really remove the floater, but neither is cataract a cause of a floater. What I'm trying to say here, friends, is they are both completely separate entities. Cataract is in the front part of the eye, which is of a natural lens. And as I said, the floater is in the back part of the eye in the vitreous cavity. So the question here is, how do we treat posterior vitreous detachment? It is just like what we will do with small floaters. So the first option and the best option would be leave them alone. And over a few months, your brain will learn to adapt. And this technique is called neuroadaptation. So what I'm trying to say is that your brain will get used to these floaters in the line of your vision. So what I meant was no treatment at all is actually the best treatment. So there are two other options available in the treatment and management of posterior vitreous detachment. Let us presume that you have a lot of reading to do and whenever you're reading, this floater or a large PVD comes in front of your line of vision and it disturbs your reading. Two other professions where this is found very commonly disturbing is watch repairs as well as people who watch diamonds or they examine a diamond with an eyeglass or they examine a diamond under the microscope. Because if they start seeing floaters in front of the eye, the gradation of the diamond will really change and this will really affect the profession. So there are two options which are major options possible for the treatment of PVD. And one option, friends, is called vitrectomy. When we actually, it's a surgical procedure, unfortunately, where we actually enter the eye, remove this jelly and replace it by another solution. That's one option. And the second option is vitreolysis, where we use a nanosecond laser and we examine, this is not a surgery, and we examine where the floater is and we try to break this floater into still smaller pieces or evaporate them. These both options are a little drastic. So if you can actually live with them, friends, the best thing is to accept them. Let your brain learn to see with them, as I mentioned, this is called neuroadaptation. In all of this, don't forget the most important thing. If you experience floaters, one, retinal examination. Two, if there is a retinal tear or retinal hole, immediate laser because that will prevent a detachment for that patient. So friends, this brings me to the end of this episode of PVD or large floaters. Stay tuned to my channel of iLogs, which is everything to do with vision and eye care. And please share this with friends and family because we are here to spread education.